So this weekend, what we're showing is pretty much it's like a dry build of the car. So if you had your Airfix kit when you were a kid and you kind of check it all fits together, that's what you're seeing behind me now. And by Easter next year, we're running a jet-only car at Newquay on these rubber runway wheels. That's about 200 miles an hour. Um, and then we finish that, do that testing, and then it's off to South Africa in the summer to make an attempt to 800 miles an hour. I came to the project um, through the IMECI as an educational ambassador and I absolutely fell in love with Bloodhound. It was absolutely incredible. We take uh, the project into schools and it's absolutely the secret source to get kids inspired about engineering and technology uh, and to, to inspire the next generation into careers in STEM. So we'll always ask, you know, what, what's, the, if you like, what's the legacy? What, what's on this car that you're going to see going down the M4 or whatever? There's actually probably very little. There aren't many, many supersonic cars out there. Or, but it's things like how we solve problems, how we use technologies from different, different theatres, different, whole different industries that we, we glue into this vehicle. And we're, a, we're a mixture of, of spaceship, of racing car, of jet fighter, but also we've got part of a, an oil rig in here. We've got all these different things we pull in and how we solve problems. We have a very, very small design team with very tight schedules and it's how do you use resources the most efficiently. This hasn't been done before, um, so no one has an answer and there's not books to reference. You can't go away and think, OK, I'll swat up and I'll be able to work this one out. Um, so we have relied on um, engineers that are experts in certain areas, um, many meetings and many hours of debating what the best way is to go. And ultimately we do back up the theory with experience from people like Ron Ayers on our aerodynamics program um, and our chief engineer Mark Chapman who's got many years of experience in, in aero fields. But, I mean it's not just about the projects, I'm lucky enough to go with the education team and visit schools so the fact that I get to inspire young kids as well as working on the project itself, it's, it's just fantastic. It's really exciting and it, and it appeals to all. We have seen a massive uptake in both girls and boys getting involved in the project um, and um, with, with flames coming out of the back and um, access to all the information on the car, um, you can't not be excited by it. But actually you go to a primary school and kids and science teachers, they just, they just kind of go, this is so cool, you can, the numbers we can do, the whole facts we can do and we can share. But actually it isn't just the primary school. As you go up through um, secondary school, GCSE, up to A-levels to universities, the amount of stuff that you can share and you can do is unparalleled. But also, it's that, you know, it's got 60 feet of flame out the back of it. It goes faster than a bullet. It goes, if Andy Green pointed it vertically, it goes to 25,500 foot with 55 seconds of fuel. He breaks the sound barrier at 17,500 feet. That isn't the fact that I worked out. That came from a GCSE class that was doing it on Excel. And they, they kind of worked all this out for us. They said, these equations, Newton's laws of motions, we never saw any use for them. But actually, working out how far Andy goes vertically really did it for them. And the teacher went, this is fantastic.